right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Dr. Cheryl Robinson, who is in Manhattan in New York. How are you doing, Cheryl? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? Fantastic. And Cheryl's been a regular contributor for Forbes Women, focuses on women who have pivoted in their careers, and she's interviewed over 250,000 women, including names such as Suzanne Shan, Kathleen Kennedy, Bobby Brown, Diane von Furstenberg, and many others. And you really focus on this, uh, on people who have pivoted, right? And I guess 2020, given the pandemic, pivot is a word that's been heard a lot right now because there's a lot of people have had to pivot in their personal lives yeah. and their professional lives, businesses have had to pivot, uh, et cetera. So, um, so let's start off by, by, let me ask you, when you've talked to all these people and people who've made like big, big pivots uh, in, their, in their lives, what is, how do people approach a pivot? In terms, what is the best way of actually approaching it and figuring out how, when, when you should pivot and how you should? Yeah. So everyone approaches it differently, but I like to say that the very first thing you need to do is understand that you are pivoting, that mm -hmm. this moment has come for you. And there's different types of pivots. So one is you were fired, laid off, which unfortunately during COVID, that was a lot of people's experiences. Or two, you go from industry to industry, or you change jobs, or you just want to start your own job. I've spoken to a lot of people during COVID who said, this is my time. This is the opportunity to start something new. So when you recognize that you are in the pivot, then you are able to successfully strategize and set yourself up. And one of the main things to do is just to understand that you have what it takes to do it. Your past is your foundation and having that self-confidence in yourself to take that risk, that's what everyone goes through. And they don't let that imposter syndrome hold them back from taking the risk to getting to where they want to go. Yeah, and I love that you mentioned the imposter syndrome because I do think that that holds a lot of people back. Um, and, and second off, what you also said there was about looking back and recognizing what you have achieved, recognizing where you have overcome things, recognizing that you are maybe far more resilient uh, and have more endurance than you think you have in order to help you through it. And then, as you say, and then having the confidence to do it and not kind of when you, when you get to that point go, but, but, but I'm no good. Everybody's going to find me out. Right, right, exactly. And it, that self-confidence should carry you through until you get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So when you, when, you, when you talk to all of these people, when they started on, on their pivot, how did they, number one, become confident that it was the right thing to do and be able to commit themselves to it as opposed to, let's face it, as humans, we're fantastic at second guessing ourselves and even better at talking ourselves out of things. Yep. There's two things, and one of them is my favorite topic. It's ego. Mm -hmm. And growing up, at least for me and my peers, you don't want to have an ego. Ego is a negative. It doesn't make you look good. But mm -hmm. there's a fine line between being confident in what you can do and being cocky about it. Mm -hmm. And everyone that I have interviewed has expressed some form of ego, which I also equate to self-confidence. Because if you don't tell people what you're doing, no one's going to know. But having that ego to say, it's now or never, we have to take this, I'm good at what I do, and people are gonna follow me, or people are going to buy into what I'm doing, that helps everyone that I talk to take that next step. And the ego comes in different forms. And two, it's just, it really comes down to the self-confidence again. It's mm -hmm. knowing that it's the time has come and either you're going to sink or swim, or is the regret going to be too, is going to, is the, excuse me, is the regret going to be greater than not taking the risk? And again, for everyone that I've spoken to, they don't want to have that what if scenario when they get older. 
Yeah, no, and, and, I, and I totally agree with that. And I think that's a, it's a great point that you raise about ego because yeah, ego tends to have negative con connotations. However, you need some, you need a healthy ego, and I mean a healthy ego, uh, in order to be able to take chances and take steps forward, and 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 yeah, and not regret what you're doing and 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 give it a go. And, and I think, uh, and as I said, I think we're great at having that little voice in our head talk us out of things. So we really have to, over, we really have to silence that and overcome it and, and take a step forward. And then how have the people or when you've worked with other people, it's one thing when you take that step and maybe you, okay, you convince yourself and I'm going to go for it and you start the pivot. There's always that moment of, uh, buyer's remorse, right? Or where you suddenly go, oh, the <laughs> yeah. first obstacle that comes up is that, see, I knew I wasn't going to be able to do that. How have they, how do they sustain themselves through that and to do that initial period? So they relied on their past. And when you create a habit, that habit kicks in. So when you're in a certain situation and your brain goes, oh, I've been here before. Here's how I handled it. This is what we do. They just applied that habit to their new situation. So I always like to tell people that when you are about to do something new, take little steps, make it a habit first. So when you actually do take that large leap forward, your brain, your body, you're going to feel comfortable enough because you've been building up that foundation and that habit to say, okay, I've been here before. Here's what we do. Here's how we go through it. And for everybody, that's what it was. They always said, I knew what I was good at. I knew what I brought to the table. Here I am. And just keep going that we will overcome whatever, you know, we face. But yeah. Um, can I ask so you a question? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so when you started the sales pop, how were you mm. able to overcome that imposter syndrome? Um, I was just got a really big ego, but um, no, no. Um, uh, no, to be perfectly honest, it's the same. It's exactly what you talked about is I have a certain amount of experiences in the past that make give me a, a certain amount of validity and credibility in what I talk about so I draw on that and then I think the other part is approach it with the level of humility I approach it as when I talk to somebody like you Cheryl I, I'm, I'm coming at it from the point of view of this is great I'm going to learn something new from the person I'm talking to and I think if you have confidence in what you've done and confidence in your abilities like you said but then you have a curiosity to learn as well i think that's i think that allows you to move forward yeah and so many people too that i've interviewed they said do your research find mm. mentors or people that have done what you want to do yeah. and who can guide you through that process so you're not doing it alone yeah no i think that's really it's really important as well and the thing is no matter what you go to do um somebody's done it before or there's somebody doing it now and there's somebody doing it now really well so to your point you can either reach out to them or just just observe them uh and say okay i can i can learn from this but i think it comes back to that thing as you said is about you have to have the confidence to go ahead and do it you have to have be able to look back and say yeah i have some of the skills and then and then just be open to learning yeah, and, and and the other part is and i'm sure the people you talk to has been open to making mistakes too yeah. No one's perfect. You are going to make mistakes, but as long as you learn from them and can move forward, that's when you're growing. That's when you're succeeding. Yeah. As long as you're not making the same mistakes yeah. all the time, then <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> yeah. you're good. So, uh, and so, um, um, you know, as, as you talk to people about helping them through their pivot, like we said, okay, in the early stages, there's sometimes maybe you get a little bit um, um, reticent about what you're doing. But as it, as it goes on, um, how, do, how, do, how do these people sustain what they're doing and really like keep the energy there? Because it can be exciting to do a pivot, but then in mo in most things in life, unfortunately, take a bit longer than you would really like them to. So there is that kind of endurance mentality that you have to have too. Yeah, it, it's their inner di dialogue when it comes down to it. And it's the people that you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. For my company alone, I've pivoted about eight times, rebranded a couple of times, and it, it is frustrating. You do get worn out, 
But when you have that support system to lean on, that's what keeps you going. And also when you celebrate the small wins, because mm. that pumps you up, that keeps you going. Because if you're only waiting for that big win, everyone's definition of success is different, right? So if you have this large definition of success, then maybe you're never going to reach it because in your mind, it just keeps growing larger or seems more unattainable. But we could celebrate those small wins. Hey, I got one client today. Hey, we sold 10 units this week. That keeps the momentum going for those obstacles that you're going to face along the way. Yeah, and I think that's another incredibly important point, and I just want to double underline that one, is that idea of the small wins as you go, because you're absolutely correct. Sometimes we set out and we set this big vision, which is, which is fine to do, but unless we reach that big vision, we don't, uh, we don't feel that we've uh, achieved anything. And, it's, and to be honest, I mean, success in life is often those small steps along the road to maybe you'll never reach that big goal. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But you will have a lot of success along the way. And to your point, you will never be able to sustain yourself unless you take notice of the little successes that are building towards hopefully your bigger success. Yeah. And if I could just real quick too, quite a few people have said it's the people who told them they would never make it that keeps driving them forward yeah. because they want to prove them wrong. Yeah. And I think that's great too. I mean, whatever, whatever works for you, whatever works to, to motivate you. Um, but I do think that is an incredibly important point that you raised about the little wins because we do, we, I mean, it's amazing sometimes if you get somebody to take a moment and say, you know, let's just, let's just take a look at where you've come from, even in, in, in this current uh, endeavor. And suddenly they go, Oh, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm actually doing a lot better than I thought I was. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then that plays into their ego and the narrative that they tell themselves to other people, future clients, customers, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's also important, obviously, to manage expectations as you go. Because like I said, things tend to take a little longer than we would like them to. Um, and therefore, I think we have to be kind of realistic in, in the expectations that we set. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So what was the most, what was the most surprising thing? Cause you've studied pivoting, obviously pivoting for a long time. What is the most surprising thing that you have learned along the way? The most surprising thing I've learned along the way is honestly, is how people view themselves and their mm. narrative. And I have spoken to some people said, well, I never really saw myself as self-confident, but their right. behaviors proved otherwise. And to me, that was, that was so astonishing because you have to have a certain level of confidence to make a pivot. Whatever yeah. that pivot is, you have to take that first step forward. And at the end of the day, there were three core themes that I found through my studies. And it was self-confidence, risk-taking, and networking. And mm -hmm. literally, I have interviewed over 300 plus individuals and they all talk about in one form or another, those three core themes. So that, that to me was the most surprising. Yeah. And I guess the thing is like some people would say, oh, this sounds great, but you know, I'm not really a risk taker. But the reality is that life is a risk every day. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and whether you think you're a risk taker or not, whether you think you're a very, you know, you're very contained and you don't, uh, you don't take any risk. I mean, you are taking risks almost every day and you, you need to realize that actually, yes, you may not be jumping out of airplanes or whatever, but you, you do have a certain risk appetite. Yeah. And if you can recognize that too, you drive to work, that's a risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you go to a concert, anywhere you go, like you said, life is a risk. So if the risk is holding you back, maybe re reframe that narrative for yourself, that mindset shift to say, oh, I do take risks. This mm -hmm. again, take little small steps towards it. And then you'll be able to take that large leap or that bigger risk in the future. Yeah. And then, and as you said, I mean, to kind of redefine what risk means, like risk doesn't mean being, you know, just throwing caution to the wind and being crazy. I mean, risk is just taking a, cal taking a calculated move where you don't a hundred percent know what the outcome is going to be. Yeah. I, I just interviewed someone today and they said, 
you have to strategize your risk. And I love that because yeah. it is, you weigh all the pros and cons, you come up with different scenarios. And as you said, it's not, you don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but you're better prepared for what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and the other thing too, is sometimes people say, okay, well, let's see if we can try and eliminate the risk here. Well, you can't, you can't eliminate risk. You can manage it. You can mitigate it. You can, um, you know, you can, you can recognize it, but you can't, you can't absolutely eliminate it. So you have to figure out how to handle it and what your appetite is for yeah. risk. Yeah. 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 Um, so then, so then you said there was the risk. What was the last one you said? The third one? Networking networking yeah and i mean i think that's uh, obviously today that has been facilitated so much more by technology it makes networking um a lot simpler but what do you say to some people when you when you say these are the the three characteristics and they go well i'm not, I'm not much of a networker and i say to them networking and they, again this is my belief networking mm -hmm. is the number one key to success pivoting or not pivoting whatever you want to do in life my philosophy is who you know gets you in the door, what you know keeps you there. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's a practice you just have to keep going after and trying because I wouldn't be where I am today without my contacts. And everyone I've spoken to said, because of the, this person, because of that person, mm -hmm. here's where I am today. And networking, again, e e no man is an island. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> you're now, it, and it's not the quantity, it's the quality. So I believe in making and developing meaningful relationships where I don't, I'm not going to ask for a favor the first time we meet, but yeah. maybe a year down the road, two years down the road, I genuinely want to get to know you. And it's your network that helps you succeed in life, no matter what you're doing. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, to be honest, I mean, I think in some ways, uh, obviously, networking has been impacted by the pandemic, in-person networking. So. Mm -hmm. But I actually think that if people take a step back and they realize that even virtual networking, it can actually be a lot easier, especially for people who may not be those kind of people who are very good at walking into rooms or or face to face, or whatever. But virtually, even through through web cameras or something, actually, you can develop very good relationships. And I think it almost, it's almost a great equalizer in many ways. Yeah. How, so for yourself, for mm -hmm. me, I've been on so many virtual coffees during the pandemic and I've developed really great relationships that I yeah. otherwise wouldn't have done or would have if I wasn't searching on LinkedIn. So for you, were you, did you find yourself going on more virtual coffees? Um, well, yeah, I mean, we've been running a largely virtual organization for, for many years now. We made that strategic decision, so I'm used to doing it. But I'll tell you what's interesting is sometimes I, I have developed, you know, in my network relationship with people that I assume I have met in person. And then, one, and then sometimes I realize, boy, we have never actually met. But I feel like I have, I have closer, uh, you know, or deeper relationships with those people than some people I have met. And so I think that's why I would encourage people, and especially if you are maybe not as confident in, in going out there into the, into the real world of networking, is it's, it, it, virtual networking is very, I think is very comfortable and kind of underrated in many ways. Yeah. And even if people just try reaching out to one person a week, mm -hmm. just start. Yeah. To build out your network you're going to be in a good position yeah yeah exactly and not everybody's going to be the right connection for you and to be honest it's better find that out quickly than, than <laughs> later, later on um but i agree with you so let's just recap those three again so there's networking risk taking, taking. and self-confidence and self-confidence yeah ab absolutely i mean and i think that's and i think that now is a great time there's no better time than now is to work on on your self-confidence and as we said earlier you uh, as you were saying is take a look back take a look back at what you have achieved because i I've, I've been through that experience with a number of people and uh, is when they think you know well i mean i've helped people with their resumes right and they go well you know i don't really have that much going on and whatever and when i sit down and i go through and i quiz them on everything they've done in their life and i start <laughs> to put it together for them they go oh i guess i have done a lot so, yeah. I mean, I think that is so important for people. Yeah. All right. And if you don't mind me asking you another question. Sure. Yeah. What has been one of your proudest moments? 
Wow, um, that's um, oh, that's that's a I have I have a few, so that's a that's a kind of toughie. Um, to be honest, um, you know, I'm 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 very proud of my son who's 16 now. Just proud of the person he became. I'm you know just celebrated 20 years of marriage, so I'm very proud of that too. Congratulations. Um, but in many ways, to be honest, like with some of the proudest things, um, I do martial arts and earning my belts have been some of the proudest things I've ever done, to be perfectly honest. So I ask you that question because I ask people that question and that helps with the self-confidence mm. if they're feeling that they're lacking it. Yeah. There's at least one thing someone is proud of themselves for. And then that gets them thinking and then they say, oh, and then there's B and then there's C and then there's yeah. D. And then that builds them up and then they're, they feel more confident to network with people, to start a conversation. So I find it, that I find interesting is when you ask people, what's your proudest moment? And then the wheels start going. Yeah, I, I love that. That's a great takeaway. And, and people can do it for themselves because now you've, now you've sparked it. Like after this interview, I'll probably spend the next half hour thinking of all the other things that I'm proud of now. <laughs> So I, I love that. Listen, uh, Dr. Cheryl, this has been fantastic. Dr. Cheryl Robinson, all of uh, Cheryl's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you and your organization does. I founded Ready to Roar five years ago. And as I said, we've pivoted and rebranded many times. And currently, I develop leadership workshops for corporations, organizations uh, to help their teams view pivot their perceptions view things a little bit differently in order to reach their goals that they set with the corporation uh, fantastic and as i said is you know pivoting it's uh, if if i was going to pick the word of the year for this year i think it would pivoting would might be well uh, well up there as as one of the selections um so listen great information for people here i hope that if you're if you're facing challenges right now or you feel like you uh, you feel like you want to take on a new challenge or you want to pivot it, we'll be talking about it. Um, this is great, great advice and, and to give you the confidence and the wherewithal to do it. So I would check out embracethepivot.org. So thanks again, Cheryl. My name thanks. is John Golden yeah. from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.